The Space Shuttle Challenger is scheduled to blast off in the next few minutes. With us now to talk about the launch is CNN's Tom Mentier and NASA scientist Rick Chappell. Gentlemen? Bella, they are counting down the clock. They are uh, below the last mandatory hold they had at nine minutes and counting, and they're watching the skies as they continue to count the minutes and seconds. This is the eighth flight of Challenger, and they'll be leaving on a seven-day mission in uh, about five minutes. And uh, so far, the countdown has really been going very smoothly, except for one little computer problem. Yeah, they had a glitch in one of the computers uh, that regulates the range safety, gives the information on tracking the shuttle in the early stage of the flight. Uh, they ironed that glitch out during the hold, the 10-minute hold that we had, and everything's fine right now. We have a model here of what the inside of the shuttle uh, looks like, and it's a little different than uh, what we've seen previously. Previously, they had a habitat where they could actually climb inside and work. This time, they'll be working from the actual orbiter uh, to monitor the experiments that are mounted back That's there. That's right. There's a, there's a work area now that is in the back part of the, of the upper cabin of the orbiter. There are two windows in the back. The payload specialist, payload specialist and mission specialist on each ship will work here, look out into the payload bay where we have a series of different telescopes as well as a sub-satellite and a lot of different types of experiments on this particular mission. Most of these experiments uh, center with the study of the sun and the, and the galaxy on this mission. That's right. They are, we're using what's called this pallet-only configuration of Space Lab. Space Lab has a number of different components that can be put together in different ways. You mentioned the module on the earlier flights. This is pallet-only a series of, of sort of back porches that hold the different telescopes to, to really test the pallets to make sure that this configuration is an acceptable one. They've selected a lot of telescopes which then get you into astronomy, studying the sun, studying the stars in the infrared and x-rays, and then looking at cosmic rays, so a number of different astronomical experiments. Let's go down to the Kennedy Space Center now and take a look at the real thing as it sits on the pad at 39A. and. Uh, as I said earlier, besides one computer problem, the countdown has been going extremely smooth. Gimbal checks for the orbiter main engines uh, and the main engine valves have been reported to look good. The uh, gimbal checks for the orbiter main engines now are underway. The shuttle crew uh, entered the orbiter uh, about two hours or so ago. Uh, they uh, left the crew quarters after having uh, a brunch, a combination breakfast and brunch, and uh, all moved in and suited up. They've actually uh, been inside the uh, orbiter well over an hour now. All right, here you see some of the crewmen in what's called the white room. This is the room just outside the orbiter. It's on sort of an arm that extends out from the, the uh, launch support structure. You can see the um, hatch into the orbiter just behind the technicians there who are helping the crewmen with their launch helmets and their communications gear. Space flight has advanced a lot uh, from the early Apollo missions where they uh, wore weighty uh, containers that they had to work from, and now it's almost Warning memory system uh, has been cleared. easy to, to fly in space. Well, it's, it's, it's transitioning much more toward like being a passenger on an airliner. Uh, in this case now, with a crew of seven, only two of the members of the crew have to know how to fly the shuttle. The others go to do their scientific work. In past missions in Apollo, everybody in the capsule had to know how to fly the, the spacecraft, so you had only pilots. Now you've got a couple of pilots and the rest scientists. Here you can see the beanie cap, what's called the beanie cap, moving away from the end of the external tank. That, that uh, blows uh, gas over the top of the tank in the, as the shuttle sits there to, to prohibit ice building up on the tank. They started about uh, eight hours ago uh, filling a half million gallons of super cold liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen uh, into the uh, shuttle. Uh, it's the difficult and most dangerous time is when, when they're fueling it. Right. This fuel is, is extremely dangerous in terms of being explosive, particularly the liquid hydrogen, very active fuel. And so once, the, once that starts being loaded, they have to have a great deal of, of care in working around the shuttle, and there are only a limited number of people that are allowed there. And we see now a, a shot of the main engines that uh, will soon be uh, firing to life. There's less than one minute now before uh, uh, Space Shuttle Challenger heads off for its week-long mission. And uh, as Flip was saying a little earlier, it looks like the rain is not going to be in the way. It's uh, partly cloudy at the Cape right now and no real problem with the weather at all. It looks like they're going to get off between the raindrops. First thing you'll see in these engines as the flame begin to come out, that's from the liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen mixing together. 
These engines will burn for a few seconds and then they'll ignite the solid rocket boosters, which is what really takes it off the path. We have a go for auto sequence start. Challenger's computers have primary control of critical vehicle functions. The ground launch sequencer will now serve in a support mode. They're at about 20 seconds now before seconds the launch, count. and let's listen in as they count down the last few seconds before seconds. Challenger. The computers have armed the SRB ignition, hold down post, and T0 umbilical. T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, we have an RSLS abort, we have an abort, GLS safing is in progress at this time, We have a cutoff. We have an abort of this afternoon's launch attempt. Fire X water on the pad has been activated. The, uh, we are go for APU shutdown. Okay, let's see if we can get some uh, ratings at the white rim off those uh, monitors up there and get the arm back. No indication as of this time precisely is why we had this abort of this yeah. afternoon's launch yeah. attempt. We have had a redundant set launch sequence or cutoff. Uh, we have no, uh, no fire. No leak. No fire. So the shuttle Challenger fired up on the launch pad and then shut down. I heard uh, computer number five uh, ordered shut down, and uh, they were as close to launch as you could get. And uh, you can see the uh, water being sprayed on the shuttle to uh, cool it down. They say they do not have any leaks, and uh, there is no fire but they are trying to cool it down uh, before they uh, get out of the shuttle. So it looks as if we will not have a launch today and they will be doing some studying of uh, what caused the uh, automatic shutdown and the automatic sequence at the last few seconds. Exactly, you could see the main engine start actually and the shuttle began to torque up as the engines came on. Uh, they were throttling up and then something in, something as the computer checks thousands of things per second at the, to make sure everything in the vehicle is running. Something gave some bad uh, reading and so it shut the main engines off, which you can do by just throttling off the liquid fuel that goes into them. Once, you've, once they have committed to start the solid rocket boosters, you can't stop those once they're started. So you stop the main engines, then you cool everything down. Now they, you can see the white room is back out to the side of the shuttle. They'll offload the crew at this point as soon as things are safe. How much danger were they in uh, on a last second abort like that? Well, this is the second one of these that we've had. It seems to have gone smoothly in both cases. They're danger it's dangerous in that there's a lot of explosive fuel around. They're not, the, only the crew is around the vehicle at that point. They've uh, moved the uh, white room into, into place and will probably uh, be opening uh, the hatch right now, uh, trying to get them out as soon as possible. The control center is uh, in the process of uh, uh, backing out of this launch attempt, making sure that everything is safe on the vehicle. Uh, we have no report yet as to what caused this abort. We uh, got down to approximately the uh, T-minus three second mark. How long is it going to take to, to actually get the crew out? We did out? have uh, engine start. I think that normally is a fairly rapid thing. I would say tens of minutes sort of thing. They've got to make sure everything's shut down and they've got to open, open the hatch and get out. They've already got the arm out there to them. So they'll have to actually bring the people back to the pad. Uh, is there a safe area where they stay halfway between the firing room and the uh, and the actual? Pad? There, it depends on the, the the severity of the situation. They can they can go from the top of the tower, which you see here, off to the left down a slide wire in a uh, sort of a basket that carries them away from the tower if they have to, if it's a dangerous situation. It is dangerous now in that there's a lot of fuel around. But if, the, if it's not a, uh, uh, appearing to be a uh, rapidly worsening situation, then they probably would not use the slide wire.
They have just announced that uh, the shuttle Challenger is safe on the pad. They got down to just three seconds before liftoff. The uh, main engines of the actual orbiter were firing, and a computer has uh, turned it off. It uh, is standard procedure that uh, after 10 seconds it goes to automatic fire sequence. So the computer takes control and measures uh, hundreds of uh, different instruments in the last few seconds. And when it finds something wrong, the computer will actually force a shutdown of the uh, orbiter's uh, main engines and uh, so we are in the process now of uh, uh, safing the entire shuttle, turning all of the switches off that need to be turned off and the seven astronaut crews will uh, be removed from the uh, shuttle and uh, moved away from the pad area. We'll be back on CNN uh, when we have more information on uh, what the actual status of the problem was that uh, kept the Space Shuttle Challenger from lifting off at the Kennedy Space Center. Conceivably, it could have been a computer problem. It may not have been a problem with the system at all. Well, yeah, it could have been anything. Uh, the last time this happened, it was because a valve got stuck and uh, wasn't letting out the right amount of fuel. But the computer is monitoring thousands of things at once, and if it detects any problem, it just orders a shutdown, as it did in this case. They had hoped to uh, do a number of experiments, and of course, they'll reschedule this flight. They're, uh, principally, these are uh, astronomy experiments. They'll be measuring the sun they'll be taking a composite photograph in effect of the sun because as they say in astrophysics it all begins and ends with the sun and they wanted to learn a good deal more about the sun and how it functions they'll also be looking at distant galaxies and other stars once they get up there they'll be looking at the radiation patterns for example in the milky way well, one of the things, Tom, is that uh, the science mission, of course, is not as critical to the commercial operation of the space shuttle, so that it will not be like any satellites won't be launched or anything like that. But this will be a crucial setback again for the shuttle program because it'll take months and months of troubleshooting to find out exactly when went wrong. It'll have an answer within a few hours of uh, probably went wrong, but to, to make sure that it's fixed, to make sure that it doesn't happen again, will take a while. And the, uh, yet, the, so the shuttle program is facing yet another, another setback. Well, it's a big public relations blow, Bob, because they're in the trucking business these days. They want to get a a lot of contracts from a lot of scientific concerns and other concerns that have business in space and they've got to have an on-time departure and an on-time arrival and once again we're seeing the delay of a space shuttle launch for reasons that we do not yet know why but at any rate it cannot uh, it cannot add an air of confidence to this shuttle program which as you indicated and I did a few moments ago has been troubled from the onset yeah, NASA was expecting to have many launches uh, a year by now. They were hoping to have one a month by now, and then obviously with this kind of problem, they're not getting anywhere near that. The Challenger, which you see still on the pad there, which had been shut down, it is the eighth flight for that particular shuttle now in uh, the last two years. So it is the veteran of the series, and yet it too developed apparently some problems today. That's right. The last time this happened, Tom, it was on Discovery, so it, it, whatever the, the problem is, it is not unique to one particular orbiter. We're going to listen uh, once again to uh, launch control. As you can hear, the uh, crew in the cockpit of the shuttle is going back and forth with uh, launch control, going through the various checks and the debriefing for what possibly went wrong there. Meanwhile, at Cape Canaveral now, Robert Bazell is standing by with one of the guests. Yeah, with me, Tom, is Jim Mizell, who's a uh, public affairs officer for NASA. Jim, I know you don't know exactly what happened yet, but what's your best guess right now? Well, obviously, the shuttle launch sequence has shut the orbiter down at about T-minus three seconds, so we monitor about 2,000 measurements, what we call red line measurements during this period of time, 
If any one of these measurements exceeds a certain limit, which is preset into the computer, the computer will shut down. This is in order to save the crew and in order to save the orbiter as well. How much danger was the crew in during those first seconds after the shutdown? Well, as, on, as happened on Discovery before, this computer is set up and we have practiced many times on such shutdowns as this, and the system uh, is fail-safe. It will fail in a safe mode. All the systems will revert back to a safe condition. The water systems will come on and preclude having any fire in the pad area. So the astronaut's in a very safe position as well as the shuttle itself. Now, this is a big disappointment yet again for NASA, a little bit more than a year after the same thing happened. Uh, the last time it happened, it caused a serious setback in the, in the shuttle program. What do you think will happen this time? Well, it's a little early to say right now. Uh, it could be a serious problem or it could be a simple problem. Uh, sometimes uh, something can exceed a red line just by a few tenths of a degree, and the system is uh, definitely honest, it will shut down. Well, it certainly did. Thank you, Jim. Okay. And now back to you in New York, Tom. Thanks very much, Bob Bazell. By the way, uh, we have been talking about the last, last second abort. That was in uh, June 25th, 1984, and it wasn't until August 30th of that, of that year that they were able to reschedule that flight. So we don't know how long it will take to turn this one around. It is the eighth flight of the Challenger. It was a scientific mission. It was scheduled to go for seven days, a crew of seven on board. They were worried earlier today about weather conditions in the Cape, um, but uh, that turns out not to have been a problem. What turns out to have been a problem, we don't know yet. But at any rate, the computer aborted this mission just three seconds before liftoff today, scheduled liftoff at 4.30 Eastern time. And as you can see, they're still going through the procedures, trying to get the astronauts out of there. There is no danger to the astronauts, we have been assured at this time. They're going through various checks and procedures. We have been told that uh, there is no leak in the system that anyone has been able to monitor. Of course, a lot of that monitoring is done by the computer as well. So we'll just have to go through the painstaking process of now of going through the system point by point, and there are lots of points to find out precisely why the computer decided, no, we're not going to go today in the closing seconds. So that's the situation at Cape Canaveral, the Kennedy Space Center in Florida today. A big disappointment for NASA, one would guess. They had hoped to get this uh, launch off on time today to demonstrate that they can turn the shuttles around very rapidly. They were scheduled to launch, uh, they were scheduled to uh, land at Edwards Air Force Base in California next week. A crew of seven on board, they're still there, they should be coming out before too long. It was just three seconds before liftoff for this scheduled launch of the shuttle Challenger when the onboard computer said, this is an abort. Once again, here's a tape of the closing seconds of uh, ten, this nine, abortive liftoff. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. We have an two. RSLS abort. We have an RSLS abort. We have an abort. Well, there was nothing obvious in that picture to my uh, layman's eye. I've seen a number of these launches by now, and that all looked fairly normal. There was a fair amount of uh, spark activity at the bottom, but we've seen that in the past as well. Now, once again, let's listen to launch control. ...problem concerning the engine the operation of the uh, three main engines and for that reason uh, because uh, it sensed a possible problem uh, commanded shutdown of the engines and an abort of this afternoon's launch attempt it will be some time and take a detailed review of engineering data to exactly sort out what happened uh, the RSLS abort redundant set launch sequence or abort is of the same type that we have had previously however it's impossible to indicate at this point or say uh, whether the problem which triggered that was uh, simi similar. Well, there you heard uh, Jim Ball describing what the situation is so far as they know it at this time. The computers detected a possible problem in the main engines of the shuttle Challenger. Those are the engines that you see right at the base. Those are the engines that had fired. Uh, just moments before scheduled liftoff, and then, of course, were shut down. The astronauts are still on board, but we have been assured that they are not in, da in danger at this time. It's a large crew, seven altogether. You've got the two uh, people up front driving the uh, shuttle, so to speak, and then you've got a number of payload specialists who are primarily scientists, and they were scheduled to monitor the sun this time, also to monitor radiation activity in uh, the Milky Way, and then there was a kind of a commercial experiment on board as well. Pepsi-Cola and Coca-Cola both had cans of their products on board to test whether or not they could get along without losing carbonation in space. However, NASA insisted that there would be no taste testing and no showing of either Pepsi-Co or Coca-Cola products during the course of this flight.
well, there won't be any flight after all. We'll have additional details on the abort of the Challenger Space Shuttle today at Cape Canaveral in Florida. It's not on NBC Nightly News, and any additional developments, of course, will break into programming here on NBC News to bring them to you instantly. For now, I'm Tom Brokaw, NBC News, New York. This has been an NBC News report. In the headlines, there's been an abort in today's scheduled liftoff of the Space Shuttle Challenger. Computers detected something wrong just seconds before launch and stopped the firing of the ship's engines in mid-sequence. We were supposed to go up at 4.30. The mission was aborted. Tom Mentier and uh, NASA's Rick Chappell will be here to uh, discuss some of the possible reasons. And the uh, crew is about to be taken out of the uh, Shuttle Challenger now and to safety. I'm Don Miller. And I'm Bella Shaw. Lou Waters and Mary Alice Williams are up next. Thanks for watching. Cameron Vent, ISO switch open. Okay, Cameron Vent, ISO open. Contact open. And Cameron Vent, valve open. Cameron Vent, valve open. Contact open. Cameron Vent, valve open. Cameron Vent, valve open. Cameron Vent, open. Why you held up on sub step three of step nineteen zero zero four? Seconds from blast off, the shuttle Challenger is grounded. CNN's Tom Mintier and NASA scientist Rick Chappelle will take a look at what happened today and what happens next. President Reagan. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three. We have an abort. We have an RSLS abort. We have an abort. It fired up, and then what was scheduled to be the 19th shuttle flight shut down. This is Newswatch. I'm Mary Alice Williams in New York. And I'm Lou Waters in Atlanta. Good afternoon. It was to be Shuttle Challenger's most ambitious scientific mission ever. Just three seconds before Challenger was scheduled to lift off from Cape Canaveral. The mission was shut down. CNN's Tom and Tier and astronaut, or rather NASA scientist Rick Chappell, join us now with a look at what happened. Do you know what happened? They don't know what happened exactly yet, Lou. Uh, the computer caused the shuttle Challenger to stop. It was after the actual engines had fired and were coming up to full thrust, and uh, they got a computer signal that the mission had been aborted and the engines had shut down. Uh, quote from uh, Commander Gordon Fullerton, uh, who commands this mission, uh, saying, we're disappointed, but otherwise in good shape. Immediately after the uh, mission aborted, they started spraying water on the uh, shuttle to make sure that there was no fire and, and no real problem. Yeah, Tom, we should probably mention the sequence that goes through is that when the main engines start, that's liquid fuel. Uh, there are a lot of pumps in there. There are a number of different sensors throughout the engine that measure the temperatures in different places and the pressures, particularly the pressures of the fuel as it moves through the pumps. If any one of those sensors, and there are hundreds of them, if any one of those sensors taking readings thousands of times a second measure readings that are out of the bounds that have been set prior, then it, get, it sends a signal and it'll shut the engines off. The main engines, again, which are liquid, can be just throttled off turned off just like you could turn off the gas from your automobile engine and it stops running. Once they had, if they had gone farther and committed to lighting the solid rocket boosters, they are solid fuel. Once they are lit, they cannot be stopped. And so it's very important that the main engines be running at the level that they should be and that all the sensor readings are correct. So they were about two seconds from the actual two, firing two, that they couldn't have stopped. Two to three seconds, that's right. And after that, there's one signal that lights both of the solid rocket boosters and cuts the shuttle loose from the pad and it goes at that point. So you have to be sure that everything's running right up to the point that you send that signal. Okay, we've got a live picture now from the Kennedy Space Center. They have just opened the hatch of the uh, shuttle and are now uh, getting ready to uh, get the crew out. You can see uh, uh, one member has already come out. Obviously very, very disappointed that the, uh, the count went down to merely three seconds and stopped the uh, actual liftoff of Challenger. Still no word on when they will recycle the count and attempt to start it again. They've scheduled a news conference in about 25 minutes to try to explain what actually went wrong and what caused the computer to shut down the engine. Uh, this has happened once before. It's only the second time in 19 shuttle missions. On uh, June 26 of 1984, it was also Challenger that uh, went down into an abort after the last uh, few seconds. Members of the crew now beginning to exit the uh, spaceship. 
NASA says the crew is all safe. They were never in any danger. They uh, did turn the uh, water nozzles on to uh, uh, keep the shuttle from uh, having any problems. Let's take a look now at the last 10 seconds of the count, and you can hear, just as they get down to about three, uh, someone in the firing room saying they have an indication that there's a problem. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. We have an RSLS abort. We have an abort. GLS safety in progress. BFS and pass are showing 101. GLS safety is in progress at this time. Uh, CD, uh, CD uh, GPC uh, computer mode uh, 5, switch to halt. Okay, halt, halt. We have a cutoff. We have an abort of this afternoon launch attempt. GLS verify SRP ignition separation organization. So it went down to three seconds before uh, they had to abort it, and you could see, actually see the shuttle rocking back and forth on the pad. Uh, the main superstructure that holds it into position had already been removed. Yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's held by the solid rockets, and so when the main engines start, they are a little bit off to one side, and they put a torque into it, and the nose actually moves several feet and t as the engines build up, up uh, their power, and then the solids are usually lit at that point. But in this case, the engines weren't running correctly. You see the power of the computer in this particular. There are so many things happening very rapidly in the engine that have to be monitored rapidly and decisions made rapidly that the computer is absolutely essential in this particular system. What do you think the chances are of uh, possibly going again tomorrow or the, or the next day? How long are they going to have to yeah, hold I, off? I shouldn't speculate. Typically. And with something like this, the engineers need some time to take a look at what happened. They need to understand the data, and that doesn't normally happen instantaneously, but I shouldn't speculate at this point as to when it would happen. So they actually could have to take the actual engines off the shuttle. They might have to take the shuttle off the pad and uh, go back and, and troubleshoot everything. In some circumstances, what? that would be the case, but until they've looked at the data, which they now have a lot of at this point, until they've looked at that, we really don't know. So the 19th shuttle mission is an abort, and just when and if they can actually put it back in the air is unknown. NASA has scheduled a news conference in about 25 minutes from right now, and we should get some more information as to, number one, why the mission aborted and the computer shut down the main engines, and when, if, they can reschedule the mission. Lou? Okay, and when you get that information, we'll pass it along. Tom Mentier. That's time to... Headline news, I'm Chuck Roberts. The hope of a liftoff for Challenger ended with a fizz about an hour ago. The mission aborted with about three seconds to liftoff. A coolant valve apparently failed to open in one of the engines, and computers automatically detected that and stopped the firing of the ship's engines in mid-sequence. NASA's not altogether sure went wrong, what went wrong, but the ship had a similar abort a year ago. The seven-member crew of the spaceship has now left the vessel. There's no word yet on when another attempt at this flight will be made. It is a routine operation, but he's not... So far, no date has been set for a new launch. This was the 19th space shuttle mission and was supposed to have been the most ambitious. For the third time, the European-built space lab was aboard the shuttle. NASA scientists are holding a news conference at this hour to explain what happened. CNN's Tom Mintier and NASA scientist Rick Chappell will join us. And it happened about 90 minutes ago now on the launch pad at Cape Canaveral. At three seconds before liftoff, the shuttle Challenger mission was aborted. In the past hour or so, the uh, officers down at NASA have been getting together with the press to tell them what happened. CNN's Tom Mentier and NASA scientist Rick Chappell are here now to tell us what they found out about that abort. Well, Lou, they only know basically right now that they had a problem with one of the engines, and that problem caused the engines to actually shut down. Uh, Dr. Chappell, uh, everything is handled by computers in the last few seconds, and it was a computer that actually turned the shuttle off. We have a, a tape of the actual abortion of the, of the mission when the actual engines fired and then cut down. This is the last few seconds of the countdown here. Okay, there you see the main engine start. Now you see them shut down. Now you can see the orbiter actually moving on the on the pad because of the torque that comes out of the engines when they start out. And just a few moments ago, NASA officials uh, uh, decided that it was a problem with one of the control valves in the engine. Uh, we had a, uh, a failure of a chamber coolant control valve on engine two. 
which is open, full open at start, signal of engine two. And after 1.46 seconds, we command that valve under control of channel A to close down to 70%. And when we gave it the command signal, the valve failed to close. In about 60 milliseconds, we switched to channel B, which, all, which is a redundant control for that valve, and it properly resumed its position. Now, we have a basic ground rule is that on the five control valves we have on the engine, which are, we have redundant controls, and the ground rule we fly under is if we lose our redundancy prior to liftoff, then we cut off. We do not want to go into the air uh, with a potential problem. And so we then had a normal shutdown of the engine. It only took about 30 minutes for NASA officials to get back up on the pad. They removed the seven-man crew that was sitting on top of 500,000 gallons of volatile fuel. There was no fire. There was no real serious danger for the astronauts. They uh, managed to come out uh, about an hour ago from the uh, Challenger's cabin. The, uh, if the valve hadn't malfunctioned, there would have been an off-balance of fuel, and one of the engines probably would not have fired at the right amount. They have uh, five valves on there. They have an A system and a B system. And if one just varies slightly, they have to shut it down. As far as uh, restarting the mission or getting it back up, there's some problem there too, Rick. Yeah, they, he, uh, Bob Lindstrom mentioned that they have a group now that's actually beginning to look at the data more carefully. They've determined what the reason for the shutdown was at this stage. They'll look at the data now to try to determine whether it was the computer, that is the engine controller, or the cabling between the computer uh, and the valve, or an actuator that actually causes the valve to close. You have to, they have to look at a little more data to know, and then you look into whether what you have to do to replace the valve or the actuator or the harness or whatever. There is a, a couple of uh, parameters that they're going to have to look at. Uh, number one, the cargo that is already loaded aboard Challenger will have to be serviced so that it's not going to go in the next few hours. They say that the cargo could be ready in seven to ten days, but because this is a science mission and it's uh, <clears throat> studying astronomy, they use the position of the moon to actually establish when this mission was going to be launched. So they may have to actually wait a full month to get the moon in the same position to get the same scientific data. Yeah, so you're going to do, you want to, on the nights when the, when the shuttle is on the nights out of the Earth, when it's very dark normally if the moon is not up, and you can do very sensitive low light level measurements with the telescopes. Uh, if you have a full moon, you have enough reflected light that it begins to interfere with your ability to make uh, reasonable astronomical measurements. So the, the fullness of the moon, whether it's completely uh, full disk scattering a lot of sunlight back or whether it's a new moon is important. The scientists will have to make that trade-off, and I'm sure they will get together today, tonight, maybe tomorrow, and look at the trade-offs in terms of the once the people with the engines can say how long it's going to be before they can get the valve replaced if that's what they have to do, then the scientists will make the trade-off of whether they want to wait a month or whether a few days is okay. So there are meetings going on at the Kennedy Space Center where they're making some very difficult decisions whether to try to put Challenger back up again in the next few days or possibly wait a month or even longer longer. Once again, the mission was aborted, but there were no injuries and no danger to the seven-man crew. Lou? All right. CNN's Tom Mentier, NASA scientist Rick Chappell. Authorities in New Zealand... ...with Peter Jennings. Good evening. President Reagan, 18 missions. Just as the space shuttle was in the process of launching, the mission was aborted. The computers on board decided something was wrong, the crew is fine, and here's ABC's Mike Von Fren. 16 seconds, the computers have Everything the was proceeding right on schedule. The countdown four. continued without a hitch until the final seconds before liftoff. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. We have an RSLS abort. We have an abort. The main engines on board Challenger did ignite. Computers immediately shut them down, leaving the seven-man crew sitting on top of 500,000 gallons of liquid oxygen and hydrogen. Emergency shutdown procedures went into effect, and water was sprayed on Challenger's primary engines to cool them down and disperse toxic gas. We've confirmed that the uh, crew, of course, is uh, safe and uh, disappointed, but otherwise... Though Shuttle Launch Control well, spokesman Jim Ball emphasized the crew was safe, this is the closest call the shuttle program has ever had. The main engines had ignited. 
The two rocket boosters filled with solid fuel did not. They're scheduled to fire at the zero mark. And once that happens, they cannot be shut down. The astronauts call it the point of no return. The crew of seven emerged from the spacecraft, and Commander Gordon Fullerton said they're all disappointed, but in good shape. Astronaut Story Musgrave displayed his frustration. An hour after what was to have been liftoff, mission control specialists determined that computers shut the craft down because of a problem with the number two engine. Challenger has been in space seven times before, and today was the first time it has experienced this type of engine difficulties. The crew has been training for over a year for this scientific expedition. A space lab is on board, ready to make a composite portrait of the sun, and NASA is now hopeful the ship can be repaired and ready to go in just seven to ten days. Mike Von Frem, ABC News, Cape Canaveral. Former astronaut Eugene Cernan. Gene, is this what's known as a close call in the business? There's a moment of truth up there, Peter, that seems to last for an eternity. I can guarantee that. What do you mean it lasts for eternity? Explain what it feels like. Well, you know, you're up there and you're ready to go. Besides the enthusiasm, uh, when it gets down to that 3, 2, 1 point, uh, the adrenaline starts pumping and all of a sudden uh, you can feel the engine start. And uh, when they shut down, the question is, have you, uh, is everything shut down? I think that's a question that goes through your mind. I is anything else going to fire? Of course, is there a fire underneath there? And I think there's probably very quiet in that spacecraft for a few moments. And when I say a moment of truth for an eternity, uh, it takes a long while to convince yourself that things are in pretty good shape to exit the spacecraft. Is, is this a setback to the shuttle, a serious one? Well, you know, the shuttle was designed to do this in case of a failure. The ironic thing is it was probably a system that, that would probably not have been used anyway had it lifted off. It was a backup system, but the computer says everything has to be there, all the primary systems and the backup systems, of which there are many. I think we've got to view it as somewhat of a setback, uh, even though we can sit here and say that it did work as it was designed. Gene, thanks very much. Gene Cernan in Houston. Later in this pro... Peter Van Sant reports it left seven astronauts sitting atop half a million gallons of rocket fuel and the shuttle program behind schedule again. The launch of the shuttle Challenger was to have been a milestone, NASA's 50th manned space flight. But Challenger never got off the pad. Eight, seven, six... Five, four, three, two. We have an RSLS abort. We have an RSLS abort. We have an abort. Computers on board Challenger had sensed something wrong with the shuttle's three main engines, which had just started. In a millisecond, the computers shut the engines down. NASA officials now believe a computer sensed a problem with a coolant valve in one of the engines. There's a backup for the valve, but officials say they couldn't continue the launch. The ground rule we fly under is if we lose our redundancy prior to liftoff, then we cut off. We do not want to go into the air uh, with a potential problem. Water jets were turned on to guard against fire. The last time there was a similar abort, in June of last year, there was a small fire at the base of the shuttle. NASA officials say today's abort was fire safe. Uh, we had no indication of heat coming up the side, so we knew we were in a very safe condition. About 45 minutes after the abort, a dejected crew was led out of Challenger. They had trained together for years to conduct what NASA officials had described as the most sophisticated science mission ever, to study the sun and origins of the universe. This marks the second time in 19 shuttle missions that a liftoff has been stopped after engines were lit. The three main engines are at the base of the shuttle. Two other solid rocket boosters, which did not ignite, are on the sides of the ship. Once started, the solid rocket boosters can't be turned off. NASA officials say it will take at least seven to ten days to troubleshoot and repair the shuttle's main engines before Challenger can fly again. Peter Van Sant, CBS News at the Kennedy Space Center. NASA plane to simulate the sometimes stomach-churning effects of zero gravity. Only one teacher admitted to turning green. It's not the only test they go through that leaves their heads spinning. And NASA intends to name the winning teacher... ...launch of the shuttle Challenger, scheduled to lift off on an ambitious seven-day scientific mission. However, as Robert Bazell tells us now, the computers canceled the launch at the last possible moment. The countdown for the 19th shuttle launch was smooth, until three seconds before the scheduled liftoff time. T-10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2... We have an RSLS abort. We have an abort. Computers on board detected a problem and stopped the launch. Fire detectors at the pad indicated there was a small fire, and launch controllers turned on automatic water hoses. 
For the next half hour, controllers calmly shut down the shuttle's systems. NASA says the seven-man crew was never in any danger. Then the crew, which was to conduct a series of scientific experiments in space, left the Challenger, obviously disappointed. Later, NASA officials said that the problem was that a valve had failed in one of the three main engines, the second one to ignite. The force of the three engines firing caused the Challenger to lurch forward before the engines were shut down. NASA officials said they could have flown safely. They were just being very cautious. You know, we just have a very valuable cargo, and we need that. We determined that it's best to have an abort on the pad, review any potential problem we have while we're on the ground, the officials say it will be at least a week before they can attempt another launch. But they must perform several tests to learn exactly what caused that valve to fail. And if the delay is much longer than a week, this will be another serious setback for the shuttle program. Robert Bazell, NBC News. schedule, three seconds before liftoff, Challenger aborted when operate properly. Bob Mayer was at the Kennedy Space Center. We have an RSLS abort. We have an abort. For a mission abort, it couldn't have been any closer. At a news conference shortly after, NASA officials put the initial blame on the failure of a control valve in one of the rocket engines. And the ground rule we fly under is if we lose our redundancy prior to liftoff, then we cut off. We do not want to go into the air uh, with a potential problem. The Challenger, lying still now on its launch pad, is jammed with $72 million in stargazing equipment. But the only stargazing today was on the ground at the Kennedy Space Center's VIP viewing section. And the stars were out. Celebrities like David Hartman, columnist Jack Anderson, Miss Universe, Yvonne Reading of Sweden, and singer John Denver, who was set to enjoy his sixth launch at the Cape. As it turned out, the celebrities provided about the only excitement, except for the frenzy created by Pepsi-Cola officials as they gave away cold drinks and tossed shirts to promote the space extension of the Great Cola War. But within minutes, the mood collapsed with the words from launch control. Four, three, we have an two. RSLS abort. We have an RSLS abort. We have an abort. I'm disappointed, especially, you know, not so much for me, but for the kids who, uh, who have not seen a launch, I think it would be great for them. But uh, there'll be more. Maybe one of these days I'll be on one. I think it's the right way to stop everything and check out what has happened. It's seven life in there, so I think they do the right thing. Columnist Anderson was at the Cape in conjunction with the Young Astronaut Program. Yeah. You going to come back? Oh, sure. Sure. Okay. The, the Young Astronauts haven't given up on space. For those who are coming back, it'll be at least a week. NASA says the investigation into exactly what happened here will be extensive and that the Space Shuttle Challenger won't be ready to fly for seven to ten days. Bob Mayer, CNN Space Watch at the Kennedy Space Center. About a week from where we started through the count sequence, and whatever it takes additional to uh, work, and how much of it we can work in parallel on the engine, re you know, analysis and repair will be done in parallel. My uh, my expectations that we would be capable of flying again seven to ten days from now days and counting for 10 teachers in the Johnson Space Center in Houston. Just one will be chosen by NASA for a future space flight. Tony Clark reports. The would-be astronauts have undergone a week of tests at the Johnson Space Center in Houston. A week of treadmills and altitude chambers, classrooms and parachute harnesses. A week of finding out what it's like to be blasted into space. My face pulling back like this, and I kept thinking, this is better than a facelift. <laughs> but the best feeling, these 10 teachers agreed, was feeling nothing at all, floating weightless in a KC-135. Be able to do uh, forward rolls and a backward roll in, uh, without touching anything and not worrying about where you land was just absolutely superb. We had a lot of fun with a Frisbee and a ball learned how to drink water, and I was the one that got it all over my face. It's a lot of fun. I think you all ought to go do it. <laughs> but only one of the 10 teachers will actually get to fly a shuttle mission. For the others, this week of being an almost astronaut is simply something they can share with their students. I wish my classes were right here. I'd love to be able to tell them all about the things that I've done. You're going to have some really excited kids in the fall. The toughest test for the teachers is yet to come. Not weightlessness, but waiting. Waiting till sometime after July 19th to find out who NASA selects as their teacher astronaut, and then waiting until January for their shuttle mission to blast off. Tony Clark, CNN, the Johnson Space Center. Dr. The Navy's Blue Angels.
Fort. GLS Saping is in progress at this time. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Tom Brokaw, NBC News in New York, and you're looking at the launch pad at Cape Canaveral, Florida, where they have just at the last possible moment aborted the flight of the Challenger. It was to have been a seven-day mission, strictly scientific. The eighth flight for the Challenger in two years. They were in the final seconds. You saw some activity at the base of the solid thrusters. Now the cooling process begins. This is a fairly crucial time because they had activated a lot of the systems on board. The com onboard computers had already taken over the firing sequence. And they're cooling it down now on the shuttle. Uh, you have a, a very volatile system on the Cape Canaveral pad there. The big orange colored tank, of course, is filled with a very cold hydrogen. And Robert Bazell is at uh, Cape Canaveral. Any clue there, Bob, as to what happened in the closing seconds? No, Tom, there's no clue right now. The biggest danger right now is the liquid hydrogen. They, they have to watch very carefully that it might boil. There was a small fire uh, at the base of the engines. They turned on the automatic fire suppression equipment, the water that you saw a few minutes ago, to turn out the fire. We're listening to the voices of the astronauts right now. They seem to be very calm. Everybody's assessing the situation. We don't know why the engine shut down. This happened once before last June, 1984, at exactly the same time. Uh, three seconds to, to launch. They're trying to assess the situation. They have not yet ordered an evacuation of the crew. However, they have put the access arm back in place so that the crew could get out of there in a matter of just a few minutes by going down a slide wire. You can see on the screen there a picture. Uh, it looks like the base of the main engine. There is a fire there. There are uh, automatic uh, hoses out there that are, are trying to put out the fire. The, mission, the launch control is talking to the astronauts, trying to... The main thing that they're watching is to make sure that the... A uh, hydrogen fuel does not boil over, and that does present a danger of an explosion at this point. There, that doesn't mean there will be one. They're watching it very close. Bob, uh, we just heard a report from, uh, from launch control that they have been going through the various sensors in the system looking for leaks, and thus far they have not discovered any. You know, one of the reasons they're looking for leaks is if it becomes necessary to order an evacuation of the eight-member crew, they want to make sure that there's, they, they don't put the crew into more danger by ordering them out of the capsule. So you see a very good shot of the fire hoses squirting down on the, the main engines there where we have seen some fire. Now, fire... Bob, yeah. well, let's, let's just listen a little bit because there's a fair amount of activity between the cockpit and uh, launch control, and maybe we can pick up some information there. Both the uh, flight crew aboard Orbiter Challenger and the uh, test team here in the launch control center is uh, in the process of uh, uh, backing out of this launch attempt, making sure that everything is safe on the vehicle. Uh, we have no report yet as to what caused this abort. We uh, got down to approximately the uh, T minus three second mark. We did have uh, engine start and uh, automatic cutoff. For, uh, for some reason, the four redundant computers aboard Orbiter Challenger sensed that there was something wrong and commanded a shutdown of the three main engines. That automatic uh, sequence, which uh, cuts off the launch countdown within T minus 31 seconds, and right, particularly right. after main engine start, uh, terminated this, yeah, this right, afternoon's right. launch attempt. LTD, post abort safety checks are complete, fire leak detector status is satisfactory, verify concurrence to proceed with SRB, SNA safety. Yeah, RSR concurs with safety. Oh, Bob, uh, Bob uh, Zell, there was no, there was no firing of the big solid rocket thrusters on either side of the shuttle, was there? I mean, they that, had that's not... Correct. That's correct, Tom. The, the big solid rocket boosters are like Roman candles, and once they go, the shuttle's got to go. Right. What happened was that at least one and maybe more of the main engines started to fire. The computers on board detected something was wrong. We don't know what was wrong yet, but the computers ordered a shutdown at T-minus three seconds. There was some fire at the base of the shuttle. Out the fire now, and what's happening is that the launch control center is making sure that... Uh, and deciding what to do next. Uh, this is a very crucial moment, but everybody in the launch control center is remaining very calm. Yeah, we saw a fair amount of spark activity at the base of the main engine on the shuttle itself. They fired up 
at about four seconds in. That's a routine procedure for them to light up then. And then, of course, we'll get the firing under normal procedures of the solid rocket boosters. And we did not get them, but we did see a fair amount of spark activity. And then, of course, it was aborted. And the decision is made not by the men on board and not by the men on launch control, but by the computer at that point, because the onboard computers and there are uh, primary systems and backup systems make a decision based on what they are reading and what is going on and what they have read that was wrong, we still don't know. Yeah, that's correct, Tom. And as, as I said, it does not look now like they're going to order an evacuation of the crew. The last time this happened, they said that the main concern at T-minus three seconds was a possible explosion from the liquid fuel. They watched the gauges very closely, and apparently they've decided that there is no danger. So the astronauts, the eight men on board, appear to be uh, safe, and we'll be seeing them coming off in a while. Okay, we're going to take another look, Bob, at the final 10 seconds of this aborted liftoff today at Cape Canaveral. It's always a dramatic moment whether it goes or not. Here's the uh, tape replay. Six, five, four, three, two. We have an two. RSLS abort. We have an RSLS abort. We have an abort. RSLS saving is in progress at this time. It could, con it could not come any later than that. That's the last possible second, because as Bob Bazell indicated, once those solid rocket thrusters on either side of the shuttle light up, there is no controlling them. They are Roman candles, and they lift it off whether it's ready to go or not. But they have aborted it, and what you're seeing now, once again, is a live picture of the cooling process at the base of the main engines that were firing on the Space Shuttle Challenger. And of course, the great concern is what happens uh, to all of that liquid hydrogen, which is in the big orange tank that is attached to the underside of the Challenger. They don't want any explosion of any kind because that would erupt in a fireball there on the pad at Cape Canaveral, to put it quite bluntly. So they're in the cooling procedure now. They've checked for leaks. Thus far, they have not found any. And then they will go through the standard evacuation, one guesses, of the uh, eight astronauts who are on board. This has got to be a major disappointment to NASA because this was to have been a seven-day uh, mission and it was described as the most ambitious scientific mission flown by any government anywhere at any one time. And as you know, the uh, space shuttle system has had its ups and downs. Recently, they've had a couple of good missions, and they had hoped that this one would go off on time today at 4.30 Eastern time, but it has not. There are seven people on board altogether, including the oldest astronaut ever to fly, 50-year-old Carl Heinesen. He's been a... Uh, an astronaut for 18 years now. Well, there's the crew in happier times before they were loaded into the uh, before they were loaded into the Challenger cockpit today. They were all strapped in place. It must have been at once an exhilarating and terrifying and then finally a moment of some relief when they knew that nothing ultimately was wrong with the shuttle that would cause them any personal danger. At least that's what we believe at this time. So three seconds before liftoff today for the space shuttle Challenger the mission was aborted, the call made by the, uh, by the uh, computers that are on board the big spacecraft, and we do not yet know what just exactly went wrong. What we do know, however, is that the astronauts still are on board, the cooling procedure is underway, and they will be evacuated. It now looks as if they will not have to use the emergency evacuation procedure, which means that they go down a, a guide wire, a slide in effect. Everyone describes that as something that will work, but it's never really been tested under real-time conditions, and it's a harrowing ride under the best of circumstances. It does appear that they'll be able to make a normal evacuation of the uh, Space Shuttle Challenger. Bob Bazell, do you know anything more at this point? Yeah, Tom, they've declared that all the systems on board that could possibly present a danger to the astronauts have been safed. In other words, there are no dangers right now, so that it becomes a much more routine now uh, of shut, uh, operation of shutting down all the systems until the astronauts will be taken off. So they, NASA has declared that there is no danger, and it looks like uh, whatever the problem was, that they don't know what that is yet, but the astronauts are not going to have to evacuate in a hurry. Conceivably, it could have been a computer problem. It may not have been a problem with the system at all. Well, yeah, it could have been anything. Uh, the last time this happened, it was because a valve got stuck and uh, wasn't letting out the right amount of fuel. But the computer is monitoring thousands of things at once, and if it detects any problem, it just orders a shutdown, as it did in this case. They had hoped to uh, do a number of experiments, and of course, they'll reschedule this flight. They're, uh, principally, these are uh, astronomy experiments. They'll be measuring the sun they'll be taking a composite photograph in effect of the sun because as they say in astrophysics it all begins and ends with the sun and they wanted to learn a good deal more about the sun and how it functions they'll also be looking at distant galaxies 
and other stars, once they get up there, they'll be looking at the radiation patterns, for example, and the Milky Way. Well, one of the things, Tom, is that uh, the science mission, of course, is not as critical to the commercial operation of the space shuttle, so that it will not be like any satellites won't be launched or anything like that. But this will be a crucial setback again for the shuttle program because it'll take months and months of troubleshooting to find out exactly when it went wrong. It'll have an answer within a few hours of probably went wrong, but to make sure that it's fixed, to make sure that it doesn't happen again, will take a while. And yet, so the shuttle program is facing yet another another setback. Well, it's a big public relations blow, Bob, because they're in the trucking business these days. They want to get a a lot of contracts from a lot of scientific concerns and other concerns that have business in space and they've got to have an on-time departure and an on-time arrival and once again we're seeing the delay of a space shuttle launch for reasons that we do not yet know why but at any rate it cannot uh, it cannot add an air of confidence to this shuttle program which as you indicated and I did a few moments ago has been troubled from the onset yeah, NASA was expecting to have many launches uh, a year by now. They were hoping to have one a month by now, and then obviously with this kind of problem, they're not getting anywhere near that. NASA was expecting to have many launches uh, a year by now. They were hoping to have one a month by now, and then obviously with this kind of problem, they're not getting anywhere near that. The Challenger, which you see still on the pad there, which had been shut down, it is the eighth flight for that particular shuttle now in uh, the last two years. So it is the veteran of the series, and yet it too developed apparently some problems today. That's right. The last time this happened, Tom, it was on Discovery. So it, it, whatever the, the problem is, it is not unique to one particular orbiter. We're going to listen uh, once again to uh, launch control. As you can yeah, hear, the uh, crew in the cockpit of the shuttle is going back and forth with uh, launch control, going through the various checks and the debriefing for what possibly went wrong there. Meanwhile, at Cape Canaveral now, Robert Bazell is standing by with one of the guests. Yeah, with me, Tom, is Jim Mizell, who's a uh, public affairs officer for NASA. Jim, I know you don't know exactly what happened yet, but what's your best guess right now? Well, obviously, the shuttle launch sequence has shut the orbiter down at about T minus three seconds, so we monitor about 2,000 measurements, what we call red line measurements during this period of time. If any one of these measurements exceeds a certain limit, which is preset into the computer, the computer will shut down. This is in order to save the crew and in order to save the orbiter as well. How much danger was the crew in during those first seconds after the shutdown? Well, as, on, as happened on Discovery before, this computer is set up and we have practiced many times on such shutdowns as this and the system uh, is fail safe it will fail in a safe mode all the systems will revert back to a safe condition the water systems will come on and preclude having any fire in the pad area so the astronauts in a very safe position as well as the shuttle itself now this is a big disappointment yet again for NASA all, a little bit more than a year after the same thing happened uh, the last time it happened it caused a serious setback in the, in the shuttle program what do you think will happen this time well it's a little early to say right now uh, it could be a serious problem or it could be a simple problem uh, sometimes uh, something can exceed a red line just by a few tenths of a degree and the system is uh, definitely honest, it will shut down. Well, it certainly did. Thank you, Jim. Okay. And now back to you in New York, Tom. Thanks very much, Bob Bazell. By the way, uh, we have been talking about the last, last second abort. That was in uh, June 25th, 1984, and it wasn't until August 30th that, of that year that they were able to reschedule that flight. So we don't know how long it will take to turn this one around. It is the eighth flight of the Challenger. It was a scientific mission. It was scheduled to go for seven days, a crew of seven on board. They were worried earlier today about weather conditions in the Cape, um, but uh, that turns out not to have been a problem. What turns out to have been a problem, we don't know yet. But at any rate, the computer aborted this mission just three seconds before liftoff today, scheduled liftoff at 4.30 Eastern time. And as you can see, they're still going through the procedures, trying to get the astronauts out of there. There is no danger to the astronauts, we have been assured at this time. They're going through various checks and procedures. We have been told 
that uh, there is no leak in the system that anyone has been able to monitor. Of course, a lot of that monitoring is done by the computer as well. So we'll just have to go through the painstaking process of now of going through the system point by point, and there are lots of points to find out precisely why the computer decided, no, we're not going to go today in the closing seconds. So that's the situation at Cape Canaveral, the Kennedy Space Center in Florida today. A big disappointment for NASA, one would guess. They had hoped to get this uh, launch off on time today to demonstrate that they can turn the shuttles around very rapidly. They were scheduled to launch. Uh, they were scheduled to uh, land at Edwards Air Force Base in California next week. A crew of seven on board. They're still there. They should be coming out before too long. It was just three seconds before liftoff for the scheduled launch of the shuttle Challenger when the onboard computer said, this is an abort. Once again, here's a tape of the closing seconds of uh, ten, this nine, abortive eight, liftoff. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. We have an two. RSLS abort. We have an RSLS abort. We have an abort. Well, there was nothing obvious in that picture to my uh, layman's eye. I've seen a number of these launches by now, and that all looked fairly normal. There was a fair amount of uh, spark activity at the bottom, but we've seen that in the past as well. Now, once again, let's listen to launch control. ...problem concerning the engine, the operation of the uh, three main engines, and for that reason, uh, because uh, it sensed a possible problem, uh, commanded shutdown of the engines and an abort of this afternoon's launch attempt. It will be some time and take a detailed review of engineering data to exactly sort out what happened. Uh, the RSLS abort, redundant set launch sequence or abort, is of the same type that we have had previously. However, it's impossible to indicate at this point or say uh, whether the problem which triggered that was uh, semi similar. Well, there you heard uh, Jim Ball describing what the situation is. So far as they know it at this time, the computers detected a possible problem in the main engines of the shuttle Challenger. Those are the engines that you see right at the base. Those are the engines that had fired uh, just moments before scheduled liftoff and then, of course, were shut down. The astronauts are still on board, but we have been assured that they are not in, da in danger at this time. It's a large crew, seven altogether. You've got the two uh, people up front driving the uh, shuttle, so to speak, and then you've got a number of payload specialists who are primarily scientists, and they were scheduled to monitor the sun this time, also to monitor radiation activity in uh, the Milky Way. And then there was a kind of a commercial experiment on board as well. Pepsi-Cola and Coca-Cola both had cans of their products on board to test whether or not they could get along without losing carbonation in space. However, NASA insisted that there would be no taste testing and no showing of either Pepsi-Co or Coca-Cola products during the course of this flight. Well, there won't be any flight after all. We'll have additional details on the abort of the Challenger Space Shuttle today at Cape Canaveral in Florida tonight on NBC Nightly News. And any additional developments, of course, we'll break into programming here on NBC News to bring them to you instantly. For now, I'm Tom Brokaw, NBC News, New York. This has been an NBC News report.